Hello there, welcome to Brogue. Um, I just played a game of this. I just recorded a session of this. Um, that I intended to be a first in this video series. I don't think I'm going to use it because I lasted like 25 minutes and it's just too short a time to spend with this game. This game deserves more than what I was able to show in that first video. So we're going to take another stab at this and I'm going to explain the game again as we go. Um, Brogue is a, a beautiful game. It's one of my favorite games. Um, it's renowned for a few things, and I will vouch for both of those things. Uh, one is the, the beauty of the actual ASCII graphics. It uses ASCII graphics. There are tiled versions out there I think you can find, but there's no need, man. The, the, the ASCII is really well done. You can see on this title screen alone, all this is is colored squares, and this alone is quite lovely. Um, it's very clean and clear, the ASCII graphics, and they're, they're really well done. But, uh, the second thing it's renowned for is the level design. Uh, there was just a video put up in the last like two days uh, on YouTube by Brian Walker, who made Brogue. Um, he was at the roguelike celebration of 2018, and he made a a video that the first 15 minutes or so of that video is about how he designs his levels in Brogue. Um, and it was to me it was fascinating because I I, I defy you to find another another roguelike that makes levels as um, as interesting and as fun to play. Uh, in terms of the actual design of the level as Brogue. I think it's very elegant and beautiful. Um, in any event, let's play a new game. Now, another thing I should mention, um, I play this game a fair amount. It's my go-to game when I travel because I have it on the iPad. But my iPad is a first-generation iPad, and my Brogue on the iPad is very, very old. Um, the game I just played is the first time I've touched version 1.7.5, which is the most current version. Um... And I died quite early. I don't know if it's a, uh, you know, I don't know if the distribution of items is is different or what, you know, I don't know what happened, but uh, or if I just played stupidly. But it did seem, I got to admit, a little more vicious than I'm used to. So we'll hope that this game goes a little smoother. Um, what can I tell you about this? Up here, you can see we got a health bar, we got a nutrition bar. There is a hunger clock in this game. If you run out of food, you will starve to death. Um, I've never done so. I've never lived long enough to starve to death. Uh, you can also see up here, hello and welcome adventurer to the Dungeons of Doom. Retrieve the Amulet of Yendor from the 26th floor and escape with it. Yes, this game has the exact same plot as Rogue, as the name would imply. Um, it is a, a derivative, derivative of Rogue only in that it takes the same um, premise. I, I, and, I, and I guess the concept of ASCII graphics, perhaps. Uh, although Rogue uh, also had various tile sets and such. Um... This game, while it may take the same concept and the same even names, Amulet of Yendor, Dungeon of Doom, 26 levels, um, is very, very different. It plays different. It plays, in my opinion, a lot more elegantly and beautifully. Um, you can see it also has mouse support. Look at this. Anywhere I'm pointing here, you can see at the bottom right here, you'll see pop up a description of what we're looking at. Shallow water, murky waters. Just so you know, shallow water you can pass through, no problem. Murky waters, if you enter, um, your items in your inventory will start to drift away from you. So try to stay out of it at all costs. There can also be eels in the water. There might be other monsters too, but I've only ever found eels. But the eels exist in the, in, the, in the water sometimes, not always. So be a little cautious when you're in the water. They can swim into shallow water as well. You can only see them if they're right next to you as well, which is an idea I may or may not have taken for caverns. Caverns, water monsters, you can only see from one square distant. I didn't expressly intend to take that from Brogue, but I may have subconsciously done so. There are a few things I did expressly take from Brogue. I'll cover those when we see them. Um, this is the dungeon exit. You can see up here a list of things you can see that are of, of, of import. Um, items and such. Items, monsters, etc. will appear here. Uh, that's the only one that matters. If we get the amulet, we got to come back to this square and step on it. We'll win. We won't get the item. The amulet. You can also see some base stats. We have strength 12. Uh, strength and health are your only two stats. Uh, strength dictates how well you do in combat. Uh, health is your hit points. Both can be raised by drinking certain potions. Um, be aware, this is a, a game where there is no experience points for killing monsters. Your only way to improve your character is to find and utilize items. Um, at first, I got to admit I was turned off by that, but I think it works exceptionally well in Brogue. I have no problem with it anymore. You can use the numpad to move. You can also use the mouse. This is a door. Step on doors to open them. It's that simple. This is one thing I took from took from Brogue conceptually, and that is uh, foliage. Um, yeah, before I played Brogue, I didn't have foliage in caverns. I then took it. There's three different types of foliage now in uh, 
light, dense, and standard, I guess, um, in caverns. Um, it blocks line of sight in this game, and if you step on it, you can trample it and permanently remove it. Uh, it works differently in caverns, but I, the idea to use it at all came from, for me, from Brogue. Just want to give credit where credit's due. Here's a gray potion. This game, just like uh, Rogue, uses item identification. You've got to, uh, we don't know what that gray potion does. Uh, it, it, until we drink it, we won't know, know what it does, or unless we somehow identify it via a, a scroll, for instance. Um, so scrolls and potions are, are, or anything you find, is unidentified until you figure out what they do. And it'll be different every game. A gray potion, what it does in this game, may be totally different from what it does in the next game. But if we drink that gray potion, we'll know what gray potions do, and we'll know it for the rest of the game. As you can see, over here we can see a few different things popped up. We can now see a kobold. Here's his health bar. It's wandering. It tells us the state it's in. It's not, it doesn't know I'm here, in other words. There's a lavender potion way over there. And there, there's the down staircase to the next level. Let's try and get that potion. I want that potion. Still doesn't know we're here. I'm not too threatened by it. If you press I, we can see our inventory. You always start with the same thing. You always start with a dagger, plus zero dagger. Standard leather armor gives us three armor classes. That's why we have the armor three. Here's our stealth range. The heavier the armor you wear, the lower your stealth range, um, which is how far away, or maybe maybe the higher your stealth range, we're not sure. But it, it whether higher or lower, that number dictates uh, how easily monsters detect you. So if you're wearing heavier armor, they'll detect you easier. Um, you can also see, incidentally, in next to the armor and the weapon and the darts, uh, a number in these uh, triangular brackets. Uh, greater than or less than symbols. This is the amount of strength you need to have to wield this item without repercussions. Um, you can wield a heavier item. You can wield something. That, you know, I have 12, 12 strength. I can still wield something that had 20 strength requirement. It would just have massive penalties. It would not be use, useful to me. It would be so, so outweighed by the, uh, the repercussions that it wouldn't be useful. And we have some darts to throw. We have a little bit of food to, to eat. We have that one great potion we picked up. Let's keep walking. Let's just escape from that. You'll also see, by the way, um, anything I'm pointing at here you know, tells you a little bit about it. I didn't take that for, for caverns. That's been in caverns for a long time, but uh, but that works the same in caverns. Actually, here you got to actually left-click it before it pops up. You see, we're getting... Uh, it's another thing. The, the stronger... If, if your strength outstrips the strength required to use an item, you start getting extra benefit from it. Because we are strong enough that this is you know lighter than what we can typically use, we get an extra, I guess, half? Half of a, an armor point, I'm guessing. Um, so for strength, we got up a, a couple more points. Maybe, I guess, probably up to 14. This would probably be worth 4 armor instead of 3, is my guess. But it carries a bonus of plus 0.5. I assume that's plus 0.5 armor. <laughs> Whoops, escaped. Lavender Potion. Now, as I said, there's no experience for killing monsters. This guy's still wandering. We could... Oh, there he saw us. Now he's hunting. I'm just going to pass my turn and let him come to us. Didn't take much to kill. A kobold's pretty easy. Okay, what's this? A sword. Nice. Strength 14. So you can see, if we were to use it now, I'm not going to necessarily use it, but if I click it on, it carries a penalty of minus 5 because of our ina inadequate strength. So there, we want to get our strength up a little more. Um, nonetheless, uh, for one thing, it may, it may be enchanted. It will reveal its secrets if we defeat 20 enemies with it. In other words, if it has an enchantment and we kill 20 enemies with it, we'll learn what that enchantment is. Um, wielding the sword, assuming it has no hidden properties, will increase our, or decrease, pardon me, our current accuracy by 28%. So we'll hit 28% less time, and that's because of our inadequate strength. But it will nonetheless increase our current damage by 66%. I'm still not going to use it yet. We don't need it yet, our dagger will suffice, but, uh, we'll see if we can't, uh, get our strength up. And, or get that sword identified, or enchanted, or something, to let us use it. Kill that jackal. We're going to use a lot of these potions and scrolls before we leave the level. Um, you know, I died in the last level because I was stupid enough to use a... Not stupid enough. I used a potion in a way that I, I used it all weekend. This past weekend, I got my best score ever. I'm not good at this game. I got down to dungeon level 14 out of 26 this past weekend. That's my best game ever. I get down to 13 on a fairly regular... Well, not fairly regular. I get down to 7 and 8 on a fairly regular basis. I get down to 13 occasionally. Got down to 14 once. So all the tactics I used this past weekend... Um, I don't know, man. I thought uh, I thought this would. Uh, I thought I was doing all right. Let's try this right now. Um, let's try a gray potion. I'm gonna use it in case it's a fiery potion. I'll be able to jump in the water and put out the fire. Yeah, I'm left clicking it, clicking apply. You can throw uh, things. Potions in particular, they can have negative effects. And if you throw a potion that has a negative effect at a monster, it will have that negative effect on that monster. Let's not throw this. Let's apply it. 
You shiver as a chill runs up your spine. It must have been a potion of invisibility. So we are invisible right now. You know what? I'm not going to use the other potions yet because we'll, we'll take advantage of our invisibility to walk around and kill monsters without them knowing we're there. You do extra damage when you catch them unaware. You can see our at symbol is written in blue right now. It's because we're uh, our stealth range is one, so I guess that's what it is. They can detect us up to one square away. There, you dispatch the rat, or the rat catching it unaware. Um, so I guess lower stealth is better. And now they can detect us up to seven squares away. That's what that means. Gold is your score. There, we found 105 gold pieces. You can see our gold right here. If we lose or, or win, when we when the game ends. Our score will be equal to our gold, possibly with a bonus if we win, but I wouldn't know that, having never come close to winning. Got him. This guy knows we're here, but we'll kill him nonetheless. The early monsters aren't too big a threat. You can kill them pretty easy. I was a jackal, a rat. None, none of those have special abilities. They just have different stats. This is a bloodwort stalk. Um, I don't know if I want to use it right now, but... Uh, if I step on an, a red asterisk, it'll bloom a red gas. Uh, and it uses the asterisks. These only exist once. They might might or might not grow back later. I can't remember. Um, I don't think so. But uh, but don't quote me on that. But um, it'll spread a red gas around. As long as you're in that gas, or anybody's in that gas, they will heal as long as they're in it. Gas in this game is really, really well handled. I'll show you it when it comes into effect. Go look. Let's explore the entire level. Oh, there we go. We're, we're visible again. There's another potion. We're going to go stand near some water again and uh, try and use another one of these potions and hope for the best. you got to get them figured out soon. I don't want to die as a result, but what are you going to do? A lavender potion. Let's drink this. What does it do? A shimmering cloud... Oh, this could be problematic. No, I guess not. A shimmering cloud of rainbow-colored gas billows out of the open flask. It must have been a potion of confusion. You feel very confused. Now, if we try and walk while we're confused... They all, incidentally, this white gas is confusion gas. As long as we're in this, we'll keep getting re-confused. Uh, we'll get to see the gas effects in action. You can see them a bit right now. It's a bit... Uh, well, you'll see it soon. It, it sort of fades at the edges, and it will dissipate over time. We'll talk about that in a minute. But while confused, if we try and walk, we will move instead in a random direction. In this game, however, at least in the version I've played in the past, if we pass our turn, it has no effect. We can just stand here and it'll pass our turn. You can see the beauty of the gas sort of uh, subsiding. It's hard to tell when it's over this blue area, uh, over the water. But um, yeah, the gas is diffusing and will slowly dissipate. Um, that is, a, you can see our confusion is still with us, though. Until this red bar is gone, we should probably just stand here. I don't want to risk diving into that water. Unless a monster shows up. Um, what was I saying? There we go. Gas dissipating is a concept, again, I stole from Brian Walker, from Brogue, uh, to put into Caverns of Zeskazian 2. It, my gas is not as well handled. Uh, it, it, this, this is beautiful. It fades at the edges, like I said. It dissipates in a really logical um, way. It's, it's much more simply handled in Caverns. It just, you know, slowly, slowly, every gas square has a chance of disappearing. Um... But the fact that it diffuses or, or disappears at all is a result of playing Brogue and saying that's really cool. It used to be a static thing where if gas appeared, it just stayed on, stayed in a square. Let's try and use the rest of our potions. Let's try and uh, find out what they are. There are certain potions we really need to discover. What does this do? Oh, okay, another gas. A caustic gas billows out of the open flask. It must have been a potion of caustic gas. You can feel the purple gas eating your flesh. You can see our health is down a bit. It actually has a minus here. My iPad doesn't have that. It just has the health bar fading. You don't know the actual number. But let's get away from this. We can outrun it. Um, doors do not necessarily stop gas. It can seep under doors, but it slows it. You can see it didn't go very far. It might still go a little bit further. Um, let's just go across. We'll go to the other side of the water. To, you can see it's all the spread all the way over to here. Um, if we were to, uh, as I said, gas is really, really well handled in this game. If I was to even stand, you can see it's fading again. If I was to uh, stand on a door here, Say the gas billowed up and it wasn't quite enough strong enough to get under the door. If I open that door by standing on it, um, the gas will start billowing out in the hall again. It's uh, it's really well handled. All right, let's use the next of our inventory items. The good news is we've gotten rid of two negative potions with not really any consequences. 
That's one we really want. Newfound strength surges through your body. It must have been a potion of strength. Our strength is now 13, which means we're one point closer to being able to use, with no problem, that sword. If we look at it now, it's only a minus 2.5, uh, which means it would have 16% accuracy penalty, incre uh, almost double our damage. It's probably time to use it, but let's, let's drink this brown potion first. Might even use some scrolls. Let's see here. Let's use the brown potion. Let's apply it. That's what I was afraid of. Um, can I jump into the water, or is this going to cause some sort of steam effect or something? You are no longer on fire. That's what I wanted. Am I burning because of steam or something? No, we're okay. Maybe I am. Scalding steam fills the air. That's not good. I can't really run from the square, though, because... uh. I'll end up in the fire. Let me see if I can, uh... Give me a second. I don't want to catch back on fire. I'm going to try and read a scroll. Maybe it's a scroll of teleportation or something. Let's read this. It was. Okay, so we're out of the steam. Good, that worked out. We now know what scrolls are. The, that kind is teleportation. That's great. Let's go next to the staircase we're about to go down. And we'll even use one more of these. I'm going to guess this, there's a good chance this is a... Well, it's not easy yet. It could be a scroll of uh, enchantment. It could be a scroll of... Uh, Identification, those are two pretty common scrolls. I don't really want to enchant the sword, though. I'm just going to use it. Let's equip it. You can barely lift the sword. One more strength would be ideal, yeah. I know. But I can lift it, and I'm going to use it. What are we standing in here? Explosive swamp gas. You want to be careful about using you know, fire around that. This is mud. This is a chasm. If we were to jump down in here, we would end up on the next level, but we would take damage in the fall. So you don't want to do that unless you have to. It can provide an escape route, though, if you need to. That rat, let's just kill him quick. There's a potion over there we want to get. There's one here, too. A black potion, so we don't know what that one does. There's this potion. I love these uh, levels because you can... Well, we haven't, you haven't seen the best of it yet in terms of uh, the interesting things it can do, but it, you can often... Um, hey, they're just nice. They're nice levels to, to walk around. Um, but uh, you can often sort of get a sense of where secrets might be based on the the level design and that sort of thing. We haven't really had occasion to see that. Yeah, there's a bridge across uh, across this chasm to some armor. Let's get this armor. This is more leather armor, so it might be enchanted. We don't know. But uh, assuming it's not, then there's nothing really remarkable with this armor. There's no reason to switch right now. And it could be cursed, so I'm not going to switch right now. A lot of monsters over here, like a lot more than you would uh, normally find in a, in a grouping in an area. Let's let this kobold come out to us. Let's deal with this goblin. And a rat. Let's get this potion. Let's kill this jackal. As you can see, you're not getting any experience points. What's interesting is I've seen uh, screenshots of uh, from 2011. Early versions of the game. I'll tell you about this in a second. Early versions of this game did indeed have... Um, did have... Uh, experience points. Uh, Brian eventually took them out because he thought it was ruining the game. Something I'm noticing, and I don't know if it's, this has always been the case or if, it's, if I'm just noticing it now and... I don't know if this has to do with the fact that we're not on my iPad or if it's a new version. There's a slight discoloration of these floors. This uh, cost a gas trap. I'm, I, I think that's the pressure plate I would step on to trigger it. So as long as you stay off it, I think we're okay. But I could be wrong. I wasn't sure if these discolored areas might be uh, indicative of a, a pressure plate or something, but I guess not. Let's head up on in here. More leather armor. Shit. We need something better than that. Monsters can set off traps, too, so you want to be careful of that. Oh, here, here's something interesting right here. What is this? This is a locked iron door. Let's try and open it. Yeah, we can't. So there is a key somewhere on this level, uh, either either hidden somewhere that we just haven't seen yet, or perhaps carried by a monster. Maybe that rat, if we're lucky, that we just saw. Uh, until we get that key, we can't open that door, but opening that door will let us go in and... I'll show you something pretty cool in there. I'll see if that rat went down here. Can't waste forever, of course, because... Uh, there's a fucking monkey. Monkeys can steal your items. Best to handle them from a distance, in my opinion. Let's throw a dart at him. At the monkey. Pressing T. You can see his, uh, oh, it did 34% of his health to him. That's good. Pressing T to throw. Clicking the dart. Clicking the monkey. All right, he's almost dead. Let's just try and kill him quick. I missed him. He punches us. That's, well, at least he didn't steal from us. I missed him. He missed us. All right, he's dead. Yeah, you want to be careful. They can uh, 
They can steal your items and then they run away and you have to hunt them down to get your items back. I really want to get in that door, but I'm not sure where to head. I don't know where that rat went, for one thing. I'm not seeing another uh, area. Oh, maybe there's a secret door up here if we're lucky. There's a rat. Maybe he'll have a key. Nope. There's a slim chance there's a secret door in here. Let's press S to search. Oh, there's a damn... You abandon your search. Oh, that's new in this version. Uh, in previous versions of the game, uh, um, I didn't realize it took turns. I didn't know that's how it worked. Okay. I'm not sure if that's new in this 1.7.5 or if it's uh, like compared to whatever I'm playing on the iPad or if it's uh, always been that way and I just, you know, the, the information isn't provided to you there. So there is a key somewhere, but I don't know where that key is. I also don't know if it theoretically could be on the next level. Uh, in my experience, it's always on the same level, but I'm not sure... Um, and I don't want to spend an, an inordinate amount of time here searching because uh, that's just asking for trouble, you know, wasting. We don't have any extra food to back us up right now. Our nutrition's halfway down. We have one, only one piece of food. I would like to get in there. We can see what this is. This is oh, this leather armor again. What do I care? But there could be something else in this room um, that would be really valuable to us. And right now, I don't know. Yeah, you can see in here, there's also a flail. That would be a beautiful weapon to pick up. We need 17 strength, but it would do a lot of stuff, and it has uh, uh, special abilities. I think a free attack whenever moving between two spaces that are adjacent to an enemy. Um, and So I guess you attack them as you pass, I guess. An aluminum wand, who knows what it would do. There's a monkey over here again. Maybe he has the key. Let's go try and kill this last guy. If he doesn't have it, we'll just leave and we'll... We'll feel sad that we've left this stuff behind because I wouldn't mind getting in that room. Both to show... Ah, oh, fuck, he got by. Both to show you how awesome the design is. All right, fuck. Fuck the monkey. I have no reason to suspect he has the key. Oh, there he is. If we have to, if we have to fight him on our way out, we'll deal with him. Yeah, we have to. Throw a dart at this monkey. Got him. Throw a dart had this monkey. Missed. If you miss, you can pick the dart back up, so that's pretty nice. There are other throwing weapons you can find later on, too. I've seen javelins as an example. Alright, let's try and hack them apart. There we go. Get our dart back. He didn't have a key, so let's just get out of here. Oh, fuck. Kill this jackal first. They can follow you downstairs as well. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna use, uh... Let me use another potion. We know it's not gonna be fire or confusion, or what was the other one we used? I forget. Fire, confusion, and uh, caustic gas we know are not going to be a problem. Colors are everywhere. The walls are singing. It must have been a potion of hallucination. The way hallucination works in this game, very different from caverns. Uh, in caverns, it actually makes you see things that aren't there. You actually see monsters and you can query them, but they're not really there. In this game, anything you see looks like something different. You can see this thing's fluctuating. We already know this was a, a flail, right? But looking at it right now, no, it's not. It's an emerald ring, and the emerald ring looks like food, and like you can see all kinds of crazy shit over here on the left. Uh, now it's a scroll and title this. It's not really changing. It's just that's what we think it is. Same thing with monsters. You can't tell what monsters you're facing, so we might want to ride that out. Let's just uh, pass our turn a bit. Again, don't want to waste an inordinate amount of time because we are losing time in our hunger clock here. Oh, fuck, there's a monster there. I didn't even notice it. No idea what we're fighting. We killed it. Very dangerous if you come down to a level where you, where there are like you know particularly vicious monsters, and you start hallucinating. Then you don't know what you're facing. Here, no matter what we face, it's not gonna be that tough. Almost done. Come on, hallucination, go away. All right, I'm gonna use my last wand here, or wand potion. Pardon me. What's the black potion do? You float into the air. It must have been a potion of levitation. Let's just briefly go up and see if we can get an entrance via this. Now, the cold marble statue has weathered the years with grace, so that's not uh, not going to work. There might be a place to get something on the edge over here. Not likely, but possible. All right, it was worth looking in case there was like a little area over here where there's a key. I think that's it. I don't think there's anywhere else for us to really search. I don't know where that key could be. Again, maybe in this version it could be on lower levels. I don't think it usually was in the older version of the game. But you never know. Let's just head down. Still levitating. Don't need to do this. Can't do this for long, but we could do this. Let's fly over the chasm. 
Just because we can. Okay, let's get back over here before we fall. As you can see, our levitation bar is slowly, uh, slowly depleting. That is a goblin conjurer. Um, as you see, when you highlight something, it tells you all about it. He has 59 gold pieces. Oh, interesting. I didn't know you could tell what they have. So that's kind of cool. If we kill him, we can get that. Uh, he can conjure swords, like four spectral swords will fight us. You can do that over and over again. We want to get him while he's sleeping. If we can kill him while he's sleeping, you want a chance to conjure swords. Oh, shit, he's awake. And as you can see, these things are in the way. Another quirk of um, Brogue. You can move diagonally, but you can't move diagonally if there is a, a wall you know, adjacent to you that would be one half of the equation. We can't go southeast here because there's a wall to the south. We can't go northeast because there's a wall to the north. Um, that's what I'm trying to suggest. We need to get... Fuck, kill that jackal. Kill this thing. We need to get into that room, in other words, or else we're not going to be able to get that goddamn goblin. And if we can't get this handled fast, we're going to be in trouble. Fuck, we're in trouble. Okay, see if we can kill this goblin mystic. Nope, we cannot. Let's run. Oh, you'll get him here. Nope. We're really in trouble. All right, we are on the verge of death. If we weren't so close to death, I might suggest we jump into that chasm and end up in the next floor. Um, we have a potion of invisibility, but I don't think it's going to be enough to keep us alive. I don't think. I could be wrong. And I don't think there's any scrolls here that could really save us. I don't think. We ought to use the scroll of teleport. I'm going to try the potion of invisibility. Okay, we're invisible. There's a slim chance it'll let us get out of here. Okay, guys. Holy shit. We need to heal. Let's eat as well. We're hungry. So let's press I for inventory. Let's left click the food and apply it. There we go. The food tastes delicious. Our nutrition bar went back up to the top. Alright, thank God for that invisibility potion. Thank God we knew what it did. What's this thing? A green potion. Could be a health potion. Could also be something that kills us. I'm not going to eat it yet. Let's go kill this guy because he doesn't know we're here. Alright, he's dead. And when he dies, his, uh, his spectral swords go with him. I'm not going to grab that scroll yet because I don't want to face those jackals when I'm in this hurt. I'm going to go stand next to these stairs and drink this green potion and hope for the best. It is. Okay, you heal completely and your maximum health increases by 33%. It says health plus 300%. So we must have been at, we must have started the game at 200% health, I guess is what that means. Not sure. All right. That's good news. Okay, we're we're back in action, guys. I thought this was going to be another short video. I was like, oh, I just I finished a, a a shitty game and now we're playing a follow-up shitty game. I thought that would be really shitty. <laughs> Doubly shitty. I want to get down to at least dungeon level 7. 7 or so is probably my average. As I said, I'm not good at this game. If we can get deeper than that, hey, so much the better. Hey, more food. There's also mangoes you can find, which is, a, I think, a slightly inferior version of food. A potion over here. Let's see what we can get in here. Potion of incineration. Okay, so we because we drank one earlier, we know what this is. We will not drink this again, but we could throw it at enemies and light them on fire. We're not going to do that with this kobold. It'd be a waste, but... You can also see we're, uh, we're blue right now. I don't know if you noticed at the bottom here, it mentioned... Uh, how, do we, how do we see that? Can we press tilt, maybe? Press, let's press question mark. Question mark brings up this handy uh, thing that tells us uh, everything you can do in the game. Does it mention uh, seeing previous messages? No. Let's try list discovered items. So you can see here, actually, it is interesting. Here's all the different kinds of post uh, scrolls there are. The only one we know is teleportation. That's it. There are these two negative ones. The rest of them are all good, I guess. Um, there are these kinds of potions. We found all the ones with the exclamation mark. We've used them. There's still paralysis, darkness, descent, and creeping death that are shitty. It also tells you the odds of finding them. I didn't know this. This is great. There's a couple of good ones out here. Um, all kinds of rings we could find. It doesn't tell you about the curses that can be on them, because there, there can be curses on rings. Staves. Um, this would be like healing of a monster, hasting a monster, protection, protecting a monster. The red, the red ones are bad. But there are bad rings. At least there were, unless they took that out of the game. Alright, interesting to see. Never done that before. Um, where the hell am I? This guy apparently conjured swords way the hell over here. I'm not worried about him. But yeah, you can see uh, this area happens to be cloaked in shadows. Perhaps a safe place to hide. That's why we're blue. 
our stealth range is down to three. If you're in a shadowy area, I guess you can kind of tell that based on the fact these periods are darker. I got to admit, that's one area I find the game a bit confusing, the ASCII graphics. Um, there's sometimes torches on walls too. I wouldn't even notice that. Like they're so subtle. It's just like a, a yellow hashtag instead of a instead of another one. So I, I, that's one area where I wish they were a bit more mm, graphic about it. I guess when we saw the discoloration before, what we were seeing was the different light levels and rooms. Here's another trap of some sort, a paralysis trigger. So if we step on that, we would trigger paralysis gas to shoot out a vent somewhere, probably. New scroll. Last place we want to check is over here, but I don't know if we want to really even risk it with that conjurer walking around. Conjurer who almost killed us before. Yeah, you can see the blades are coming after us already. Let's just get out of here. There's no, ah, fuck, there's a conjurer ahead. He doesn't see us yet, though. Now he does, but he's trapped, so we got him. All right, maybe we can actually do this then. Let's just check out the last of this area. Kobold is fine. You see the uh, the auto walk interrupts when you see a monster. Just kobolds. We don't want to even mess with them. There's no point. Again, no experience, no reason to bother. I don't know if this guy will be able to chase us sufficiently to come down the stairs or not. Yeah, you can't see. I can't cut this corner. I can't go to the northeast here. I have to go here. Oh, there's a blade. Ah, oh, good. Trapped. That's the guy with the gold. That kobold's no longer chasing us. So let's just get out of here. Is there anything else we want to use before we leave? We do have a few more scrolls. You know, the enchantment might be nice because it could lower the strength required to use that sword. But I don't know if I don't waste one on it. Eh, let's try one. Do I really want to? No. Let's wait. A single strength potion will take care of that. That is a fire trap up above. Let's stay away from that. Lava. Definitely stay away from this stuff. <laughs> Do not want to cross that. That monkey is asleep. Might be a good time to dispatch it. All right, we got it. He had leather armor. What do I need leather armor for? Don't I have a ton of it? Got a bunch of leather armor. Don't need leather armor. Need other things. Better armor. That is a toad. If a toad hits us, we'll hallucinate. Or can. It can induce hallucinations. If we can stay away from it. It's wandering right now. It's just, well, there's not really anywhere else for us to go, though, is there? Now it's found us. Who cares? Let's just kill it. There, it made us hallucinate. We're still at a depth where the monsters we're going to meet are not going to be that tough, so it's not as big a threat. Hallucination? It's still not good, but... When you actually find it, that is authentically what it was. It was 153 golds. When you actually find an item, it tells you what it really was. Again, we're, you know, working off a uh, hunger clock here, so I don't want to waste too much time waiting the hallucination out this time. Uh, I don't know if those really are paralysis triggers. They don't seem to be shifting. Uh, there's really a goblin conjurer, though. How's he doing? Can I throw a, let's throw a dart at him. Let's throw another one. I'm not going to throw that potion of incineration because, of course, that uh, will light a fire. It won't just hit him and hurt him. It'll light an actual fire that will spread through the area, and I don't want to be caught in it, so that's a little easier. All right. Whoops, sorry, guys. Um, let's finish this level, and then we'll call it... Here's the vent. So if we were to trigger the stuff, uh, the gas would shoot out of this vent or, or possibly more than one vent around, but there you go. We'll finish this level and then we'll call it quits in this video. And That is a bloat. Um, whether I kill it or it attacks me, either way, it's going to explode and spread caustic gas. That's what that does. I mean, it might be worth triggering it just to get the gas out. Maybe not while I'm low on health. That was probably kind of stupid in that regard, but let's just wait over here for a bit. 
until the gas dissipates. Oh, fuck a jelly. This is not good, not good, not good. Let's get out of this region, son of a bitch. Jelly will multiply when you hit them. You want to fight them in corridors? I didn't, I didn't handle this well, guys. I'm sorry. It's going to get an attack on me. It's going to get an attack on me. It's going to get an attack on me. If I can fight it here, at least I have a better chance of dealing with it. Because it, if it multiplies, it can multiply behind me or in front of me. Um, is there anything else I can use? Probably not. I mean, I'm going to have to fight it sooner or later. If I keep running, I can get some health back. But the problem is, of course, I run the risk of running into another monster. Let's try and fight it here and see if we can. I wish I had my dagger out because the dagger would be more than enough to, to kill this thing. <sighs> I'm nervous, guys. Do we see any? We can get down. If we can get down to this corner, we can get those things going. Let's see if we can do it. Get some health back as we run as well. Fucking goblin mystic there. That's not good, but our health is back largely. We can maybe kill them off. Fuck, the mystic's coming. I don't think it's seen me yet. It hasn't. Let's try and get around it. And it's still, still stick with our plan to heal over here. Alright. Let's stand within this red stuff as long as we can. Watch our health climb. Okay. Still two more there if we need them later. I don't know where that mystic went. Or conjurer, pardon me. There is a difference between a goblin mystic and a goblin conjurer. Monkey, you don't want to deal with them if I don't have to. Let's just go around them. You can see it's still saying the gas is here. That's because we remember the gas being here, but we won't know whether or not it's dissipated until we come up. There's another area up here, a secret room. You can see behind the statues. There is a magic ring of some sort. Maybe searching for secret doors here would reveal it. We'll try that in a minute. Obviously can't search over here. <laughs> Unless we had a potion of levitation or a potion of fire resistance or something. Cobalt's not a threat. Ah! Okay, that is a key. Possibly the key to the other level, I don't know. Let's go get it. Now here's a problem. I can tell you this right now. I can see this problem very cleanly and clearly. There's a torch on this wall. There's an altar with this door key on it. When I grab this door key, I guarantee you that torch is going to drop. It's going to light this shit on fire. And I'm going to have to dodge the freaking way to get out of this thing uh, to survive or, or try and find a way to survive it. I don't have that I know of an, you know, a potion of... Uh, I don't have anything that's going to really help me with that. And that I can see. That's not to say I can't survive that. I might be able to. Um, but I also may not. Uh, do we do it? Do we do it? I mean, I, I want it. I need that key eventually. I'm going to try it and hope for the best. There you go. The altar retracts into the ground with a grinding sound. A torch falls from its mount and lies sputtering on the floor. I wonder if I could have thrown something onto the uh, onto the altar to weigh it down, have that thing drop and wait in the hallway. I wonder if that would have worked. Maybe. Now, one of the ways we can... Well, we can try and get out of here before it spreads. Barring that... That doesn't seem like it's going to happen. If we can get onto one of these squares where it's already burnt, it won't burn there again. Question is, can we dodge in just the right way to make that happen? <sighs> Let's try to stay away from the fire for now. It won't burn onto stuff that's not grass. Like The stone won't burn. If we go back into the room, yes, we might be able to get one of these opportunities, but on the other hand... It's also longer when we be exposed to the fire itself. If we, could, we could just charge through the fire and set ourselves on fire. I don't know, man. I'm going to do that. Venture into Flame, I guess not. It's warning me against it, so maybe not. I 
I don't know, man. I'm not seeing a way out. All right, we're on fire. All right, we're no longer burning. Okay, we got out of there. Thank God. I was another goddamn goblin conjurer. He hasn't seen us yet. Let's try and attack him. Let's throw a dart at this doofus. Fuck. All right, we got him. All right, I think we're done on this level. We've got the key. I don't... Let's, 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 I'm just not done quite here. Let's go see, see if we can find a way to apply the key up here. If not, let's go back to the earlier level and see if we can figure it out from there. This is clean, right? Yeah, wouldn't let me walk through it if it wasn't. Yeah, it's a door. This is probably a door key for this. I don't know where the I don't know what the other one was for. This is another bloat, but this is a pit bloat. When it explodes, it makes the floor disappear temporarily in a circle around it, so uh, you'd fall through if you're near it. You can use it to you know, get other monsters to fall through too. Okay, we open this door. Now the way these rooms work is pretty interesting. These are all on altars. We have our choice of what item we want to take. Any item we take. When we do so, a cage is going to drop on every other item, so we can really only take one thing, but it gives us our choice. We can take this war pike. Be a really powerful weapon for later. What does it have for special abilities? It's, you know, 18 strength. It's a powerful weapon. Permits you to simultaneously attack an adjacent enemy and the enemy directly behind it. It'd be great against, uh, for instance, jelly. This is a sword. We've already got one of those. We don't need that. Splint mail. Not bad. Better armor. A staff of entrancement. What does Entrancement do? It compels its target to mirror your movements for nine turns. It'd be interesting. You could use that to like walk somebody into lava, for instance, if you uh, handled it just right. Um, what is this ring? Ring of Reaping. Ooh. This ring of blood magic will recharge your staves and charms every time you hit an enemy. Cursed Rings of Reaping will drain your staves and charms with every hit. Do we have... Uh, I can't remember if this was this game or if this was the uh, game before. No, we don't have a staff, do we? That was the game before. The game where I died early. Slightly earlier than this. This is a long video, I apologize, guys. I like that as a rule, but we don't have any staffs or any charms. This is pretty neat. Plus two teleportation charm. The surface of this nickel sphere has been etched with a perfect grid pattern. Somehow the squares of the grid are all exactly the same size. When used, it will teleport you elsewhere in the dungeon. And every 302 turns, we could, we could randomly teleport away. That'd be pretty freaking useful, man. Or a Warhammer is about the best weapon in the game. 20 strength. Um, if we got that, we could slowly start trying to enchant it. Every time you enchant it, the strength required to use it would drop. We could eventually have a weapon that's super powerful if we survived long enough to be able to use it. I don't, I'm going to rule out the war pike and the sword. If I, if I go for the war pike, I'd go for the war hammer instead. Split mail is tempting. Um, we already have... A, I'm going to rule out the weapons, actually. We already have a sword, which is not great, but it's better than our current weapon, the dagger. So, or, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a better weapon than our starting weapon. So we... We're down to the armor. The ring, I'm going to rule out the ring only because we don't have any charms or staffs to recharge right now. This is pretty cool, but it's complicated to use. I think I'm going to go with this. Let's take the teleportation charm. So we have that to use if we need it. As you see when we step off, a cage drops down here so we can't... Uh, I guess we can go back on it. As we do that, it opens. But I don't think you can... I can't like throw a dart onto here. I don't think... Let's try, let's try it. I don't think it'll work. Throw a dart. Nope. Did it bounce back? Am I, yeah. I wasn't sure if I could throw something on here to, to fool it and be like, oh, the weight's still there. No. So we get the one thing. All right. Well, good enough. Let's head down to the next level. Uh, and we have this teleportation charm now. It's pretty good. And uh, we'll call it quits right here. All right, guys, I'm gone for now. I've got to get my cats into the vet today, so I better go shower and get that started. Um, yeah, you guys have a great day. I'll be back in a little while. Talk to you soon. How, how, do, I, how do I quit this for now? Um, menu. Not quit without saving. We want to save. Suspend game and quit is Shift S. Can I just left click it? Feature still in beta apparently, but I've used it successfully in the past. I'm assuming it's fine. Yes. Save game as. That's fine. Let's just call this Jeff. Oh yes, Jeff one. Jeff one. Got broke save. Enter. Saved. Okay. Let's hope to God that worked. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gone. See you later.